Hey folks, it's Dag. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, super excited to have you here. My obsession is aviation, full scale ultralights and ginormous electric model airplanes. We're sitting down in one of my shops in the basement. Here is what I have as a demonstrator. This demonstrator is what I use when I program one of my uh, radios for one of my large airplanes. I can come to this, program the landing gear delays, landing gear door delays. I can, if it's multi-engine, leading edge slaps, flaps, everything. I'm putting it back together. It's not quite back together. But the reason I'm doing this video is about servos. I don't know, five or six years ago, folks, I did a video about how to size servos to the size of the airplane you had. And it was a really popular video. Uh, because I had taken paperwork from the Academy of Model Aeronautics large model program and there's some math in there and I put that in an Excel spreadsheet to make it easier to be able to know how big a servo you should have for your flying surfaces. Now, if you're buying an out-of-the-box airplane that already has servos, you really don't care. I've had a couple of 3D guys tell me that they've changed or upgraded some of the servos on some of the 3D planes they bought because they wanted a faster servo and a higher torque. That's fine, but if you're buying a ready-to-fly airplane, chances are you don't even need to worry about this video. If you're building an ARF that only has the airframe, no motor, ESCs, no servos, no nothing, this might be good for you, but most of the time the manual is going to tell you exactly what servos you want to use, okay? But there's a caveat, and I'll tell you in a minute about something um, that scared the crap out of me. Um, and then you have scratch built. And folks, my passion for a long, long time was to engineer and develop massive, what I call ginormous scale model airplanes, uh, radio control airplanes. 197 inch wing was on my MSL-1. I had 1,350 flights on it. But folks, the flying surfaces, like just the right elevator, had more square inches than my first trainer wing had. Okay, that makes sense? The wing on my trainer had like 500 and some square inches and I had like 550 square inches on just the right elevator. So over a thousand square inches on the both elevators. On my MSL2, um, again, huge elevators, huge rudder, huge ailerons. The thing was, is my MSL1, I didn't have any of this math. I didn't have any of this paperwork. I had suggestions and there was a lot of guessing. If you're in a really fast dive and go to pull up and you don't have enough you know, elevator uh, torque, out of those servos, you could crash your airplane or even worse, hurt somebody. But in this document that comes from the AMA that I turned into a Excel spreadsheet like kind of computer, I've had that available for a long time and in the description below, uh, or yeah, in the description below, I'll put a link to it on my website for free. You can download this, but beware, only use it to the way you need to use it. And it's the AMA's math. I'm not taking any credit that I created this, but it's a really good tool to make sure you're close. But there's also things in there called air factors. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, toward the end of this. But basically, folks, when you go to scratch build a gigantic, ginormous airplane, there are so many things you need to consider for safety. Sure, the structure, the airframe, and all that. But once it leaves the ground, you're charged with flying that thing safely. I had a half-scale pits made by GNL Hobbies, Gasser. It had um, a uh, 3W150 on it. Beautiful airplane, uh, 51 pounds. I came out of a loop one time and almost hit the runway. My wife was with me. She goes, wow, that was really cool. She thought I intentionally came down and wanted to be like an inch from hitting the runway. My knees were shaking because I ran out of elevator torque with that big heavy airplane coming into downline then pulling out. I had to upgrade those servos. And that plane's under 55 pounds, so I didn't really think I needed to use the AMA's math. But anything you scratch build of any size, you need to think about what kind of torque you need for those servos. Now, basically the way the little calculator works is you put in the span of your flying surface, you put in the root cord, the tip cord, you put in the servo arm length, you put in the control arm length, and then you put in an air factor. An air factor is how fast and what kind of maneuvers is this plane going to do? Basically, if it's like a, a sport plane, you're going to put like an air factor of 1.5. 
if it's a faster war bird, you might put an error factor of two. If you're going to do violent 3D stuff where you need complete massive control movements or you're flying a uh, turbine, you might have an error factor of three. And one thing that makes me a little bit uh, cautious about some of this program is the air factor doesn't really give a miles per hour we're going. I wish there was a speed to it. Because on my Bronco, I looked at what the Hangar 9 book said, looked at the servos, looked at those torques, and put them on my flaps. And it's got big ass flaps, but the flaps on the Bronco go all the way down to 60 degrees. And they, can, they say they can go up to 80 degrees. Okay, I've got 60 on mine. Um, I came screaming into the downwind to land with my Bronco. And my Bronco probably does 100, 120 mile an hour coming out of a dive, okay? I should have pulled back the throttle, waited about 10 seconds, and then lowered flaps, then floor, well, flaps one, then gear, then flaps two. Flaps one is 30, flaps two is 60. So I enter the downwind, drop one notch of flaps, no problem, drop the gear, no problem, and immediately drop full flaps. And the plane started to roll on me. And I came into it with, came in with opposite aileron and rudder, stabilized it. And then the plane started rolling the direction I was holding the sticks and I went back the other way. So what I'm surmising, I don't have any proof, is when that flap went from 30 to 60, there was too much wind because I was going too fast and it wouldn't let the flap come down. So one of my four flaps didn't come down, which gave me roll. Once the plane slowed down, then the flap came down and the roll came out of the plane. Now, folks, I'm a full-scale pilot. There are V and E numbers. You're not supposed to. There's V and E for speed. There's flaps. There's gear deployment. All these things. On model airplanes, we don't have airspeed indicators on our planes. So we really don't know in our head sometimes how slow we should be going to deploy flaps and things like that. Now, I went back and, and did, redid the math and put an air factor of two or three in this. And it showed that the flap servos I needed need to be upgraded a little bit. And I did that because I have so many servos just laying around. Um, but folks, this video was basically to say there's three things to think about. If you're buying a plane with the servos already in there, you don't really have to think about it unless they don't perform the way you want. Then you have the ARF where they recommend you use the servos that they recommend. And you should. If you already have your servos, make sure the torque is right. But if you're going to dump 60 degrees of flaps, slow the plane down like a real airplane would, and then deploy the flaps. Um, because th th they're sized right. I was just going too fast. But out of paranoia, I went ahead and, and put bigger servos in it. So that's basically it, folks. Let me know in the comments what you think. Please like and subscribe. 80% of you come here and watch my videos, and it says you're not subscribed. So if you subscribe and hit the little you know, uh, notification thing, you'll know when I upload videos like this. And if you're on the mobile app, please do the hype because it tells the YouTube algorithm that you like my videos and you like aviation and you're cool. Uh, so that's basically it, folks. Hope this is informative. In the description will be a link to my little computer on my website for free. You can download it, but just buyer beware. Uh, well, not buyer, you're not buying it. Just beware. It's done with all the math from the AMA. It's not something that I, I don't want to take ownership for that. I just put it in a spreadsheet. Okay? So rock on. Have a great day. Uh, and blue skies. See you next time. Bye-bye.